All right, I've got a lot to say about calories today, so buckle up. Lately, my comment sections, especially on TikTok, have been flooded with people just saying, oh, just be in a calorie deficit and that will fix all of your problems. It especially comes up when I start talking about diets like keto and people just say in the comments, oh, just be in a calorie deficit and that will do it. You don't have to cut out carbs. And that's true, I totally agree with that. And actually right off the bat, before we even get too much further into this, I wanna say that if your goal is weight loss, a calorie deficit is what's going to work. I cannot argue with the law of thermodynamics, but it's how you go about creating that calorie deficit. Just saying the words calorie deficit is not going to help anybody. And as a practitioner, it's not going to help anybody by making them feel bad for not being in a calorie deficit all the time. So again, before the gym bros come at me, I know what a calorie deficit is. I'm well aware of that. And I know that that's what you have to be in to reach weight loss. We're not even going to cover today why maybe weight loss isn't a good goal for you because we know that most intentional weight loss just leads to more weight gain. Not even gonna touch on that today. This video is going to be about calorie deficits. And I want someone to keep tabs of how many times I say the word calorie deficit in this video and put it in the comments. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> but we're not even gonna cover why intentional weight loss may not even be an appropriate goal for you. We're only gonna cover why just telling someone who wants to lose weight to be in a calorie deficit is not helpful advice at all. Whew, okay, I'm already fired up. Let's get into it. So I have took it upon myself to call this the calorie deficit community, which involves those people that are commenting on TikToks just saying, be in a calorie deficit, be in a calorie deficit, it'll help you lose weight, it'll fix all of life's problems. It's becoming like a calorie deficit cult, which maybe I'll just abbreviate the CDC from now on. No, wait, I can't do that. The CDC already exists. But I'm gonna break this video down into what people specifically get wrong about calorie deficits. The first one is the myth that we all need to be in a calorie deficit all the time. That is definitely not the case. Not everybody is trying to lose weight. Some of us have goals that don't involve our weight at all. And while weight loss, I know, is very, very appealing to most people, and that's why fad diets are so popular, telling everybody to just be in a calorie deficit is not going to fix anything. In fact, once you find food freedom and you eat for more than just the purpose of managing your weight, this whole concept of a calorie deficit becomes pointless. When we find food freedom and we eat for more than just calories, we eat what tastes good, we eat what feels good. And that doesn't mean that we completely neglect nutrition and we only eat high calorie foods 24 seven, but it does mean that we don't have the fear around high calorie foods, which is a pretty big risk that comes along with counting calories. If we're counting calories to be in a calorie deficit, we're going to try to maximize the amount we can eat. And so we're gonna not eat a lot of foods like avocado, nuts and seeds. We're gonna limit our intake of like olive oil, salmon, all these really, really nutritious foods are gonna be out of the question simply because they don't meet our calorie goal. Even if you are intentionally trying to manage your weight, you shouldn't be in a calorie deficit all the time. Imagine if you were in a calorie deficit for like 15 years, would your body just like simply melt away or turn into dust and drift away in the wind? No, eventually our body is going to adapt to that low number of calories which means that if we want to continue to lose weight, we have to keep eating less and less and less. And if we are constantly in a calorie deficit, our metabolism may slow down quite a bit, which is gonna be super hard to sustain because it's not gonna be enough calories to feel satisfied and full. So I don't necessarily coach on weight loss in my private practice, but if you do have a dietitian or anyone else who is helping you with weight loss and they never allow any periods of weight maintenance, that's a pretty big red flag. Another thing that this whole calorie deficit community gets wrong about being in a calorie deficit is that eating as little as possible is the solution to very rapid weight loss. If someone on TikTok is scrolling through comments and they see that all they have to do to lose weight is be in a calorie deficit, they may not know how much of a calorie deficit to be in. And if they drastically drop their calories and just eat as little as possible, we all know how that's gonna turn out. That's the premise of every fad diet ever. And this kind of leads into my next reason that I don't love the calorie deficit community. You don't actually have to count calories to be in a calorie deficit. 
this whole calorie deficit thing is simply a concept. It's not actually a strategy that's gonna teach you how to eat. I might be in a calorie deficit today, who the heck knows? I don't count calories and I don't even know what my basal metabolic rate is. And so there's no way to know for sure if I'm in a calorie deficit. And that's okay, I'm not concerned about that because like I said, not everybody is trying to be in a calorie deficit. <sighs> but if you are trying to be in a calorie deficit, you don't have to count calories to get there. It can be a helpful tool for some people. I personally don't like that as a tool, but I will link a video more on that. But by modifying your behaviors, you might be in a calorie deficit through that. Okay, this next one kind of goes along with the whole fact that you don't have to count calories. And that would be that calories are not all created equal, which is why I don't think that calorie counting is really effective. So we get calories from our carbs, our protein, and our fats. Those are all of the macronutrients that give our bodies calories or energy. But the kicker is that the way our body metabolizes these nutrients and uses these nutrients is very different. They all have very unique purposes in our body. So when someone says a calorie is a calorie is a calorie, that's completely wrong. Again, yes, in terms of thermodynamics, a calorie is a calorie, and if you eat less than you burn, you're gonna lose weight. That's how our metabolism works. Yes, we're not arguing that in this video. I can just smell the comments from a mile away. But let's use the classic example of eating 2,000 calories in two very different ways. If we ate 2,000 calories in just Oreos, which is a common argument on my TikTok, that's not a whole lot of Oreos. And we're also gonna be getting most of our calories from carbs. Not a lot of protein, not a lot of fat, which means we may feel pretty hungry. Whereas on the opposite side of the spectrum, if we got 2,000 calories just from like chicken breast, we would first of all get a lot more food to be a lot more volume. And we would feel really, really full because that's a lot of chicken and a lot of protein. Not a lot of carbs and maybe only a little bit of fat. And so we're not getting a balanced approach at all. But that just shows the difference that even though we're getting 2,000 calories from both of those scenarios, the way we feel, the way our body metabolizes those foods, the way they use them for different functions is going to be very different. This is why dietitians encourage a more balanced approach. And we get a lot of hate for it these days, but that's what's gonna keep you satisfied. But even aside from all that, simply viewing food as a number of calories is pretty disordered. Food is so much more than just calories. It's even more than just nutrients. I say this all the time on here, but we do need to eat for more than just physical nutrition. We also need to eat foods that taste good. And sometimes we eat food to celebrate an occasion. And my final reason why I don't love this new calorie deficit trend going around is because there are so many factors that contribute to both the calories that we eat and the calories that we expend. Telling someone to just eat less, move more is so ineffective and so inconsiderate. I wanna go more into both sides of this equation. Here's why telling someone just to eat less or eat X number of calories per day is not gonna be helpful. First of all, our hunger levels change from day to day. That's normal. We're not machines, we're not robots, we're not a car that just needs fuel. We're very complex and dynamic as humans and that's a really beautiful thing. But if you're told that you have to eat 1200 calories in a day, which by the way, I don't recommend, but you feel hungry eating that much, you might feel like you're doing something wrong or you're broken or you're a failure for not being in your calorie deficit. Second of all, emotional eating is a really big aspect of this. If we tell someone just to eat less, but they struggle with emotional eating due to just daily life stressors, any kind of past traumas that lead to them overeating, or maybe they struggle with their mental health in general, with depression or anxiety. Telling someone just to eat less or be in a calorie deficit without helping them overcome those barriers, again, is just not helpful. That's not being a good provider. Similarly, we have to take into account someone's access to food. If someone is on a very fixed income, and they don't have a lot of money or maybe even a lot of know-how on how to make healthy, nutritious meals? What if they don't have access to those foods? Or what if they don't know how to make those foods? What if they can't afford those foods? What if they don't like those foods? The next reason why telling someone just to eat less or eat X number of calories is not helpful could be because they have a decreased resting metabolic rate. Like I said before, we have really no idea to know how many calories you are burning at this very moment. 
unless you had your metabolic rate tested. Otherwise, any dietitian or coach who tells you what your calorie needs are, are simply estimating. And that estimation could be way off if you have any medical conditions, years and years of chronic dieting under your belt, or maybe you're a constant dieter currently, which can lead to body dysmorphia, disordered eating, and eating disorder. And by struggling with those, it can maybe seem like you don't deserve or you're not allowed to eat 1,200 calories or your body will immediately gain weight, even if that's not physiologically true. So those are some of the big reasons why telling someone to eat less is not helpful, but let's go on the other side and see why telling someone just to move more is also not effective. This of course pertains to an individual's activity levels, how much exercise they get, how much general physical activity they're participating in. You know, sometimes when gym bros say, oh, we all have the same 24 hours in a day, so just spend 2% of it doing a ridiculous workout. That is not true. We do not all have the same 24 hours in the day. Some people have very sedentary jobs and that can also include a very long commute they have to participate in. So they go to work for eight or nine hours, they spend two hours of driving, and then they get home and have to take care of their kids. When are they supposed to squeeze in a workout in there? It's just not realistic for every single person to get a great workout in every day. Would that be great for everyone's overall health? Maybe, yeah. I, of course, am a big fan of exercise and the benefits that it has on our human bodies, but making someone feel bad for not being able to do the same level of exercise as you is, again, not going to be helpful as someone who gives out health advice. Now, there are situations where someone might just have really poor work-life balance, but again, telling them just to work less so they can work out more is not going to benefit them. We have to figure out strategies and help them overcome that poor work-life balance. Another reason why someone may not be able to just move more would be due to illness or injury. For some people, exercise can be really taxing on their body. And that's not to say there isn't a form of movement they could do. There probably is. Walking, stretching, chair aerobics, water aerobics. There are all kinds of very low intensity movements that people can do but not everybody knows about all these different types of exercise. Often if we tell someone who is trying to lose weight to get more physical activity, they feel like they have to just be in the gym seven days a week for two hours at a time. Which brings me to my last point, and that is that not everybody has access to a gym or home workout equipment or parks. Safe sidewalks are not always available to everybody to walk around in even. Or if they live in Indiana, like me, it's really cold and going for a walk when it's negative 10 degrees is not enjoyable or advised. And yeah, there are workouts they could do at home with just their body weight and like I just said in the last point, that could be a really great suggestion for them, but they may not know that or know how to do that. And so we have to advise on the specific things like that rather than just telling someone to move more. So to wrap up, I again want to recognize that the concept of being in a calorie deficit is scientifically correct. One does need to be in a calorie deficit if weight loss is going to ever happen, but not everybody wants to lose weight. Not everybody should lose weight. Weight loss may not be appropriate for some people. Focusing on intentional weight loss and even the whole concept of being in a calorie deficit could be a slippery slope to disordered eating or an eating disorder for some people. We don't need to count our calories to be in a calorie deficit. All calories are not created equal. And there are so many factors, more than I even mentioned in this video, that play into the calories that we intake and the calories that we expend or burn off. For some people, this concept of being in a calorie deficit and counting their calories is very effective for them and they really do enjoy it. And that's great. But if someone's ever told you that you just need to be in a calorie deficit and didn't really provide you any further explanation or guidance, don't feel bad for not knowing what that meant or how to do it. Telling someone to just be in a calorie deficit does not teach you how to actually change your behaviors and become the healthiest version of yourself. Whew, okay, this has been on my mind for a long time, so it feels good to finally talk about it, put it in a video. If you guys have any questions about this topic, please leave them down below in the comments. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this every week. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!